Now, the last thing we want to do to cap out the idea of definitions of limits is look at the limit definition again and use that limit definition with an arbitrary value of epsilon. So instead of specifying that the epsilon was 0.1 or 0.01, we're going to look for an arbitrary value of epsilon. Now, the reason we're doing that is because if you look back at the limit definition, the limit definition applies to any epsilon greater than zero, not just a certain number, but rather any single epsilon greater than zero. So you, what you want to do is do this same technique, but rather than having a specific value for epsilon like 0.1, we just leave the epsilon as a variable, which is epsilon. Okay, so let's go back real quick before we get further to the definition. Remember, this says to have this limit of f of x equal to l as x goes to c means that any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta. So any epsilon greater than zero, not just any specific one, any. And so we have to leave that epsilon as a variable in order to find the delta. So let's look at an example that we've already seen with epsilon equals to 0 0.01 and 0 0.01, 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. We have this g of x equals 3x minus 7. And we know that the limit of g of x as x approaches 1 is negative 4. So the question would be, what would delta need to be in the definition? if we wanted to use any epsilon greater than zero. So we have our definition again. Whoops, in this case, that's G. We want the difference between our outputs to be less than epsilon for some X minus C less than delta. So what we need to do is we need to say my G of X the difference between g of x and negative 4, an absolute value, needs to be less than some arbitrary unknown epsilon, any epsilon you can think of. And then the g of x gets changed to a 3x minus 7. And then exactly like we did before, that means 3x minus 3 is less than epsilon. Now you can do this the fast way or the short way. The short way is to divide both sides by three. If we divide both sides by three, you get an absolute value of x minus one less than epsilon over three. You could do this the long way as well by adding three, divide by three, then do the whole thing. But the short way is to just go at absolute value of x minus one, therefore it needs to be epsilon over three. So this means if you're given an epsilon, all you need to make sure is that you put your delta to be that epsilon, the arbitrary random value of epsilon over three, then you can guarantee that x minus one less than delta is going to force my output minus negative four in absolute value to be less than epsilon. So there you go. And by the way, this proves mathematically that the limit of g of x as x goes to 1 is negative 4. 
So it's only now that we use arbitrary values for epsilon can we actually prove this limit is correct. So what I would like you all to do is go back to the h of x equals 1 half x plus 2 and see if you can show that the limit as x goes to 6 of h of x is equal to 5 by finding the delta for an arbitrary value of epsilon. Go ahead and try the problem and then I will explain it in the next video.